today I would like to talk about learning from others. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, topic and a very important part of our human uh, life experience. We all know because uh, we always learn uh, from so many things. We learn from others. In fact, uh, we call our life is all about learning. We always learn something uh, uh, from others. Uh, so when it comes to our spiritual practice, uh, there are also, uh, this point is very essential, very important. Mm -hmm. If we think about our own life experience, uh, who we are, what we are at the moment, uh, how much this learning has contributed to uh, our present uh, state of life. So this is something uh, we have to deeply appreciate in our life. Mm -hmm. So if you can identify this, acknowledge this, learning from others, we can simply understand how important, how essential it is uh, to our life, our uh, progress, our success in every aspect of our life. Uh, when you think about that point, um, If we are able to learn from others, uh, life can be very easy, according to uh, my understanding, my observation, even my practical experience. You know, uh, it's very easy for us to uh, be good, even you know, be positive, and be successful. If we can simply learn from others, so many things that we can learn from others uh, for our well being. But uh, not everybody uh, can do that. It's not that easy, uh, as we say. Not many people are ready to learn from others. Uh, and for sometimes, for some people, uh, it can be very difficult, uh, very difficult uh, to learn from others because of uh, many reasons. Uh, so, how can we uh, learn from others? If you think about that, Paul, what are the conditions that we should have in our life, in our mind? in our behavior in order for us to learn from others. Do you have any thoughts on that? What are the special qualities that we need to have in our life uh, in order to easily learn from others? Do you have any idea? We have to be humble, Bhante, and without conceit. Yes, exactly. That's, a, that's indeed a very essential thing uh, for us to have in our life, to be able to easily learn from others, right? We have to be humble. Uh, if we can let go of our conceit, we can easily learn from others. And this is not the case for many people, right? For many people, uh, if they are arrogant, uh, if, you, if they have uh, conceit, uh, they are not ready to listen to others. They don't really even appreciate uh, any good thing in them. So they don't learn from them. Uh, so if we can let go of our conceit, 
विकोलिमान अहंकार इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट फॉर अस टू बी एबल टू लर्न फ्रॉम अदर्स वट आर द्वालिटीज i think the ego you need to have uh, you need to get the ego out to mm. learn mostly yeah that is directly connected to our conceit or uh, the arrogance right if we are uh, ego centered you know, if we are really uh, deeply selfish and uh, we have if we have a big ego uh, there also we are not ready to listen to we are not ready to learn from others. right so that can be the root of uh, many negativities that prevent us from learning uh, from others right definitely we have to control our power ego anything else you have to be a good listener yeah indeed you have to be a good listener yes if you are not ready to listen uh humbly right uh we cannot learn from others you know there can be so many things you know uh, there can be so many teachers wise people around you uh but if you do not know how to listen uh how to pay your mindful attention uh you would never be able to learn right that is very important you have to be very good listeners right so listening is a very special skill like skill quality you know uh even though we listen to so many people so many things uh, in our life we don't really learn uh, that much you know so many people uh, there's no any transformation as a result of uh, listening to others learning from others because uh, because of the uh, problematic listening you know when we listen to others uh, sometimes we listen uh, to them with our own uh, beliefs uh, own logics maybe you know our uh, preconceived uh, ideas you know uh, thinking patterns maybe so we don't clearly listen to what is being said uh, so therefore when we listen to something uh we need to pay our mindful attention uh like uh, if it is uh if it can be like uh you are listening this for the very first time you know so this can be the case for many uh people like you know when you uh hear things again and again you know repeatedly uh you get the notion you get the feeling that oh i know this i know this already so we don't pay our uh, clear mindful attention to what is being said so therefore uh when we listen to something we have to let go of our previous uh, uh maybe knowledge our concepts ideas and we need to pay our full attention you know emphasized in the you know ohita soto means uh, we have to uh, pay our mindful attention humble attention when we listen to uh, someone and only then we clearly uh, perfectly listen uh, or hear what is being transferred what is being said or thought so it can be different uh, otherwise so the listening is a very special skill uh so it can be uh, somewhat tricky as you hear you know because we can we cannot easily let go of our Uh, knowledge our understanding our previous experiences uh when we listen to someone right because we always compare right 
But if you do that comparison at the moment you listen, you may not be able to completely uh, get what is being said. You know, uh, you can easily miss important points, right? So if you can simply listen uh, with an empty mind, you know, so you can completely grasp what is being said. Listening is a very special skill uh, in the Dhamma practice. Uh, that is so so what are the other uh, conditions that uh, would be helpful for us to uh, learn from others Bhante, we should be easy to be admonished and we should be courteous right right exactly uh, that is very interesting too mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, when we listen to someone, uh, we have to uh, participate uh, in that listening with respect, right? Some um, appreciation, right? Uh, so we can see like these things are uh, still connecting to that harmonious, right? Our uh, less ego. And then, uh, we can easily listen to others and learn from them. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Um, being... Yes, um, I think being able to, willing to um, see and acknowledge one's own flaws. Yeah, uh, how can you elaborate that? Mm -hmm. Can you explain that a little bit more? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now we can hear. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Sometimes we we see we see what others are doing, um, but we're not able to see as clearly what we are doing and um, how we can learn from the things they do well or the things they don't do so skillfully. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's necessary also being um, honest about oneself and, and doing some work to uncover one's own motives, mm -hmm. um, one's own inclinations, so having that honesty and then um, realizing, deciding when it's time to actually change our, our own behaviors because they're not skillful. Mm, right. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's very important. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, if we are not sensitive enough, right? Uh, that is also something that can prevent us from learning from others, you know. Uh, that sensitivity, uh, you know, that receptiveness, you know, in our, uh, in our mind, in our behavior, uh, as a special faculty, maybe, quality, uh, that is very important to understand. Uh, because uh, sometimes it happens to us, you know, sometimes people, you know, parents can advise children and uh, give them necessary instructions, but uh, they don't get it, get it, they don't understand it, right? So it can happen uh, to anyone, right? That means uh, it's hard for them to get, you know, uh, it can be difficult for them to learn you know, learn from others. That means they don't feel it, you know, they don't get it, they don't understand it. You know, they are not sensitive. It's a very special uh, thing uh, taught in the Dhamma, you know, in the, uh, one stanza in the Dhammapada uh, clearly explains that uh, in this spiritual path, we have to be like uh, tongues, you know, the tongue, uh, 
uh, not like a spoon, right? Even though you stir uh, a curry with a spoon, spoon never uh, able to taste. <laughs> uh, it doesn't uh, taste anything, right? It doesn't feel any any taste. But the tongue uh, is very sensitive to uh, any taste, right? Uh, so therefore, it explains in the Dhamma, we have to be like tongues. That means the sensitivity. We have to be very receptive. Uh, we have to be very sensitive to uh, everything around us. You know, that way we can easily learn from uh, others. You know, so that sensitivity is a very unique quality. You know, it is not the uh, same for everybody, right? have that capacity that we uh, we have that uh, special quality unique quality in different levels depending on many uh, circumstances right our characters our behaviors our previous our level of education maybe our spiritual practice uh, these kind of uh, circumstances are there uh, for that sensitivity receptiveness to be uh, different from person to person you know uh, there is there can be so many things uh, uh, around us you know but uh, we never learn from them uh, if we are not sensitive to them you know therefore uh, this is spiritual practice is really the mindfulness practice is uh, uh, is the ultimate way to make us uh, very sensitive, very receptive uh, to all these, uh, you know, like ourselves, around us, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the way to learn from others very easily. You know. uh, of course, we can see uh, to be able to listen to others, uh, one's uh, level of Education, maybe you know, knowledge. Uh, these things are also very important you know, because the education, the learning, gives us such a discipline. You know, uh, gives us such a wonderful quality of uh, uh, listening. You know, uh, it is such a uh, huge discipline. You know, we can see that, uh, like. Uh, uh, uneducated person or people, they are not ready to listen to others. You know, they don't easily uh, learn from others. You know, it can be different uh, and it can be situational too. Uh, but our uh, education, our trainings, uh, all these things can uh, influence that uh, quality of learning from others. You know, uh, so wonderful thing to remember is that we have to be like our tongue, uh, not not a, not like a spoon, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you may have so many good people, positive people, in, influential people around you. Uh, you can live in such a perfect environment, uh, but if you are not sensitive. You may not be able to learn anything, you know. So there are there's no any progress or success in your life. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, from whom we can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think about that point, we always admire good people, good people uh, in our life, right? uh, as it is. Uh, emphasized in the Dhamma also, we always uh, admire good spiritual uh, kalyana mitras, we call positive friends and people around us, you know, healthy relationships around us. So we can uh, easily learn from them, you know. Uh, my feeling uh, also is that uh, we should always live with someone who is advanced. Uh, you know, comparing to uh, comparing with ourselves so that we can easily learn from them, 
you know, it's a blessing actually if we can li uh, live with someone like uh, someone like that, you know, like a teacher, uh, adult, uh, very experienced one, you know, uh, who has a lot of life experience, you know, knowledge, understanding, uh, spiritual experience like that. You know, so we can easily learn from them. So uh, it's always a uh, common understanding that we admire these positive friends, teachers, and individuals uh, that we can easily learn from them. Uh, and also, uh, it's very important to see that uh, not only these uh, higher people, spiritual people, you know, advanced people, uh, that we learn things, right? Uh, sometimes for this learning, there's no any age limit even. You know, I have heard from some of my friends that um, they have told me that uh, they, they learn so many things from their kids, you know, in their life, you know. Uh, that's a wonderful thing to uh, observe, you know. Just by observing how uh, little kids are, Behaving, you know, interacting, you know, uh, their way of thinking, reacting to things. Uh, they, uh, we can learn so many things by observing them. You know. uh, we can learn about our behavior, you know, uh, our thoughts, our reactions, our feelings towards life uh, incidents and other circumstances. And sometimes uh, uh, children, as they are very sensitive, you know, as they are getting exposed to this world for the very first time, you know, uh, they directly experience it. And they can gain uh, such clear understanding of what, what they experience. So therefore, uh, we can learn so many things from uh, the miners, you know, uh, little ones, you know, you know, for parents, you know, they can learn so many things from their children. Uh, it is not always uh, the adults, advanced people, you know, that's my point from here. Um, we learn so many things from uh, the people, individual that we uh, would not really acknowledge, you know, uh, it is very important. So in that category, uh, don't you think uh, you can learn so many things from your pets? What do you think? You may have some experience in that. Have you learned anything from your pets? Unconditional love. <laughs> that's that's so wonderful to hear. <laughs> I think that's a very common thing that we can learn, right? I mean, that is so so complicated even to watch and observe that you know how these pets are uh, sharing that unconditional love, you know, uh, and so many good, beautiful qualities, you know, wonderful qualities that they have. You know, sometimes you may not find them in human beings. <laughs> sometimes the gratefulness, right? Uh, the humbleness, that love, you know, being there for you. You know, sometimes you, you cannot get that from uh, human beings. It's very complicated, very complex nature uh, to observe, to watch. So we can learn so many things from animals, you know, uh, especially today as human nature, human behavior, uh, like commonly declining, you know, being so corrupted. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see some unique qualities uh, still maintaining the animal kingdom. You know? uh, it's very uh, surprising to see. You know, um, there are so many uh, occasions, so many experiences that uh, we can see, uh, we can observe. 
So you can learn so many things from animals, your pets as well. Uh, what about the nature? You know, the things that we learn uh, doesn't have to be from the people, from animals, but we can learn so many things from the nature. Going back to that sensitivity, you know, uh, we spoke about, if we are very receptive, very sensitive, very attentive, uh, by paying mindful attention to the nature, what happens around us, you know, in this nature, we can learn so many things, you know, impermanence, you know, how things are happening, you know, how things are come to existence, how they uh, uh, fall apart, you know. So it's a wonderful thing, actually, that happened to many enlightened uh, disciples, even uh, during the time of the Buddha, you know, as they were practicing this mindfulness, insight, meditation, uh, as they uh, were cultivating their mind, uh, as they were so receptive, so mindful and attentive, sometimes these natural phenomena, you know, were helpful for them to attain enlightenment. Because the real Dhamma can manifest in this natural phenomena, in the nature, you know, how things happen. So you can uh, easily reflect a deep Dhamma in this natural condition. You know, for me, in my personal experience, the water, a wonderful, beautiful experience uh, that can easily purify my, my heart, my mind, you know. Uh, so there can be a wonderful experience like flowers, trees. Uh, these are beautiful natural uh, phenomena in the world, in the nature, uh, for a spiritual mind, uh, for the awakening even. You know, if you are deeply sensitive to these things, uh, you learn so many beautiful lessons. Uh, so we, we can learn uh, from the nature, you know, things that happen in uh, the surrounding. You know, if we pay our mindful attention, uh, and also very importantly, uh, as we spoke about earlier, we learn uh, from others, those who are advanced, those who are good, those who are very well experienced, you know, possibly positive. What about negative people? Do we learn anything from negative people, bad people in the world? What do you think? Yes, we can sometimes learn what not to do and how not to be. Exactly. Why, why they are wrong, right? Why, why these things are bad? So, uh, it's a very important thing, you know. Sometimes we don't see uh, the bad, uh, the negativity, uh, as we are engaged in them, you know, because we hardly criticize our behavior, our negativity in ourselves. But we easily notice the wrong behavior, negativities in others. This is a, a very common basic human nature, right? We easily uh, notice the wrong in others, you know, then in ourselves, right? We can clearly see why is it bad? Why is it wrong? Why is it negative? So we can easily learn from them, you know, instead of getting angry or uh, creating any negative emotions, uh, uh, upon them, still, if we can be very sensitive and mindful, attentive, receptive to that negativity, we can learn so many things. Uh, so we can learn so many uh, things from negative people too. So therefore, uh, we have to kind of appreciate them too. You know, uh, my point is like, 
how can you learn about the loving kindness without having an angry person in your life? Like, if there is someone who is uh, easily getting angry, you know, you may have uh, someone uh, who is very difficult to deal with, you know, right? So this is where, as a spiritual person, you can learn about the importance and the effectiveness of loving kindness. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you are not an angry person, but you clearly understand why uh, this anger is bad and negative. Uh, how frustrating it can be uh, to to live with uh, such a person, an individual or an agent, right? You can easily understand. So how can you learn about the importance of loving kindness uh, without having that angry person? So for that reason, you have to be thankful to uh, that person. So you need to have these negative uh, aspects uh, in life to acknowledge and appreciate the positive things. So that is also very important. And also, uh, still in that category, you know, uh, it is not always that we learn good things uh, when all positive things are happening to us, right? We learn so many things when negative experiences are happening to us in our life. Very important. Uh, if you think about your life experience, you know, maybe essential things, very important, uh, valuable things you learned in your life. Mostly whenever you faced a difficult time, problematic situation or disastrous time, right? Maybe sometimes uh, uh, once you, uh, someone said goodbye to you in your uh, family in your life, right? So it, it is a very painful negative experience, but for, for some people, it can be a huge eye-opening experience, spiritual experience, you know, which, uh, which can give them a huge uh, insight, huge understanding about the true meaning of life, right? So uh, our normal attitude towards our negativities in life, you know, uh, is not that good. Right? We always want to be free from negativities. Uh, they are inevitable. Mm -hmm. There's no life without negativity. So, therefore, uh, somehow, we have to develop an attitude uh, to learn from negativity you know, for our benefit for our uh, positive transformation. You know, if we become very sensitive and mindful, instead of uh, getting consumed by uh, these negative, painful, sorrowful experiences, we can use them uh, as a way to uh, our success, you know, our uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is also very important. So, when we think about these points, actually, um, we can basically learn from everything, everyone, you know, without exception. Only thing that we have to be very mindful, receptive, attentive, and sensitive to them. You know? Otherwise, all these good, deep lessons can go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. So it's our duty uh, to be in that state, you know. Uh, to be able to learn. Another important thing, remember, finally, we can learn from the past, right? Even though we talk about letting go of the past, letting go of the future, uh, when we practice meditation, when we talk about the value of being in the present moment, uh, but how many uh, things are there that we learn from the past? That is also very important. Right, uh, the negative side of the past is that if we emotionally get attached to our past, you know, if we can, uh, if we are uh, lingering in the past, 
again and again in watching it. Uh, we are missing the beautiful moments uh, in the present moment. That is the wrong. But if we can mindfully, wisely reflect on our past experiences, we learn so many things. So yeah, I think we all learn from the past, right? Uh, it's how we learn lessons, right? Just by critically thinking, analyzing, understanding what went wrong, you know, uh, which decision uh, was wrong. Uh, uh, so and mindfully, deeply, wisely reflect on our past experiences, we learn so many things. That is most importantly, not to make that mistake again, right? Uh, not to commit any wrong behavior again. You know, that is the real way to uh, our progress. So, uh, as I said earlier, you know, life can be very easy, you know, if we can simply learn from others. It doesn't cost anything, right? Just by being humbly uh, listening to others, paying mindful attention to them, uh, we can learn so many things, you know, that are beneficial to us. So, uh, in this spiritual journey, uh, learning from others uh, is a very important thing. You know, it is not easy for many people because of uh, these human negative human emotions. Uh, it is not easy for many people. But as we can see uh, along the path, along the practice, as we cultivate all these spiritual qualities. Uh, Naturally, we become able to learn from others very easily. You know, that's a wonderful thing to uh, happen uh, to a human being. Okay. So that's what I wanted to share today with you uh, about uh, learning from others. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>